Welcome to the Grants Portal How-To Video Series, presented by FEMA's Public Assistance Training Section. This video will cover the process for an applicant to respond to Essential Elements of Information, or EEIs, in Grants Portal. First, we will review some terms and get an overview of what EEIs are and how they are used in the Public Assistance, or PA, grant application. We'll follow this with a demonstration of locating, completing, and submitting an EEI in Grants Portal. The recipient is the state, tribe, or territory that receives and administers the Public Assistance Federal Award. They apply directly to FEMA. Whereas the applicant is a state, local, tribal, or territorial government, or eligible private nonprofit entity that may request and receive subawards under a recipient's award. You may also hear the term subrecipient. That refers to an applicant after funding has been obligated. The Program Delivery Manager, or PDMG, serves as the primary FEMA point of contact for the applicant. They provide customer service and programmatic guidance throughout the first five phases of the Public Assistance Program delivery process and ensure that the applicant's projects are processed as efficiently as possible. Let's take a quick look at how the EEI workflow fits within the PA grant process. After a presidential declaration has been made, the applicant begins Phase 1 of the Public Assistance Grant Program by submitting a Request for Public Assistance, or RPA. This will be reviewed first by the recipient and then by FEMA. Once the RPA has been approved, a PDMG can be assigned to the applicant. Together, the PDMG and applicant will complete an exploratory call and applicant impact survey, followed by a recovery scoping meeting. The applicant can begin to work on the initial damage inventory, or DI, during this time. As phase two begins, the DI will be completed by the applicant and the PDMG will use it to formulate projects and coordinate site inspections as needed. Each damage in the DI will be assigned a specific category of work. This category reflects the type of work and or type of facilities. Each project will be assigned a lane based on whether or not the work is complete and how complex the project is. There are three possible lanes, completed, standard, and specialized. Once an EEI is generated, the PDMG will send it to the applicant and recipient to complete. The applicant completes EEIs by answering questions and uploading required documents. The recipient may help the applicant complete the EEIs or can complete them on the applicant's behalf. They then send the completed EEIs back to the PDMG for review. This can be done as many times as needed. The PDMG will review the EEI responses and documentation and submit the project to the Consolidated Resource Center, or CRC, for review. The CRC will then begin Phase 3, Scoping and Costing. The PDMG and the recipient may assist the applicant at any step along the way if needed. EEIs are a series of project and lane-specific questions and documentation requirements that support claimed damage, work, and costs. They are needed to process the claim for reimbursement. EEIs are required for each project and are separated by category of work and lane. Documentation is specific to the category of work and the amount and complexity of the work completed. Categories A and B refer to emergency work, that includes either debris removal as Category A or emergency protective measures as Category B. Categories C through G refer to different kinds of permanent work, such as roads and bridges as Category C, or buildings and equipment as Category E. Each category of work has its own specific EEI questions and documentation requirements to verify eligibility and substantiate FEMA PA grant funding. A project can include work from multiple categories. For example, your park could be damaged, which is category G. The park could include a road, which would be category C, and a building, which would be category E. You will need to respond to an EEI for each category of work included in the project. Amount and complexity of work is captured by the lane. There are three possible lanes. The completed lane is for 100% completed work only. To submit a completed lane project, all documentation must be ready to submit to the CRC. 
The standard lane is for work that has not been completed. These projects typically require site inspections. In this case, projects will be written based on estimates made by the CRC and require additional documentation to be submitted to support costs later in the process. The specialized lane also includes work to be completed, but is more complex and requires specialized technical expertise. As EEI questions are answered in Grants Portal, additional questions are generated by the system. The responses to the EEI questionnaire also generate a list of required documents. The PDMG and the recipient may use information and documents from the exploratory call and recovery scoping meeting as well as damage and project details to review and assist the applicant with completing EEIs. The recipient and PDMG can respond to EEI questions and upload documentation on behalf of the applicant if needed. EEI responses and documentation can be uploaded by the applicant, recipient, and PDMG and are viewable in Grants Portal and Grants Manager. Note that the EEI can only be edited by the recipient and applicant when the EEI is at the process step pending applicant response. The PDMG will be unable to make edits while the EEI is pending applicant response. The recipient may have additional documentation requirements if they are providing all or part of the non-FEMA cost share. Documentation should be complete, detailed, and readable. There are two parts to the EEI, questions and required documents. Based on your responses to yes-no questions, you'll be prompted to provide narrative responses that clarify what work is being claimed, when and where it was performed, who performed the work, and what equipment, supplies, and materials were used to perform the work. You will also provide total hours and costs of work being claimed. Your responses to the EEI questionnaire generate a list of documents you will be required to provide. These documents can include things like maintenance records, insurance, pay, and procurement policies, payroll, fringe benefits, labor summaries, contract agreements and bid documents, or invoices, load tickets, and work orders. You will provide the necessary documentation by uploading and attaching documents to meet each requirement. FEMA provides some standardized forms that you can use to summarize required information. You do not have to use FEMA's forms, but you must provide all of the information asked for in them. These are called summary sheets and are available on FEMA.gov. Make sure that your EEI responses and documentation support the who, what, why, when, where, and how of everything being claimed. From what you provide, it should be clear who has the legal responsibility to perform the work, what damage is being repaired or what activities were or are being performed, or for emergency activities, what impacts you're responding to. For example, if you're responding to a hurricane, this could be things like preventing floodwaters from entering a building or evacuating survivors from wind-damaged facilities. Be able to show why specific activities were performed as opposed to others. When did the damage and work occur? Provide dates. Where did the damage and work occur? Provide precise locations with addresses and GPS coordinates. How was the work completed? For example, did you use contractors or force account labor? Many of these questions will be directly answered by the responses you provide to the EEI questionnaire. The rest of this information should be easily gleaned from the documentation you provide. We will now locate and complete an EEI in Grants Portal. One way to access EEIs is via the task bell. Clicking the task bell in the upper right corner of the page will take you to My Tasks with a list of incomplete tasks waiting for you to review. If the PDMG has submitted the EEI to you to complete, there will be a task with the type listed as Submit EEI to FEMA for Review. Clicking Review on the left side of a task will take you directly to that task. You can also view a list of all of your EEIs, regardless of whether or not they're waiting for you to review. In the navigation panel on the left side of the page, click on the My Tasks heading. Select Essential Elements of Information. Here you can see that we have several EEIs in progress. The third one in this list is the one we located using the task bell. By default, we will see columns for EEI type, 
event, project number, project title, project category, EEI status, and EEI process step. The EEI type displays the lane and category of each EEI. The project category displays the category of the project. A project may have more than one EEI, and the EEI category may differ from the project category. In this case, our list includes two different EEI categories of work on the same project. An EEI status of open indicates that the EEI can be edited by the applicant and recipient or by the PDMG. You can also view complete and canceled EEIs by using the filter. The EEI process step is a useful field to pay attention to. Here, you can see the one we need to submit to FEMA is Pending Applicant Response. There are also two EEIs that are pending PDMG review and one that is pending PDMG initial submission. These are not available for you to make changes, but you do have the option to view them by clicking on the magnifying glass on the left side of the entry. Let's open the EEI we need to submit to FEMA by clicking on the magnifying glass next to it. On this page, you will see an area for questions and an area for required documents. The required documents list is populated based on your responses to the EEI questions. Currently, no documents are required since no EEI questions have been answered. Click on the Manage EEI Answers button in the Questions Area header to begin entering your responses. On this page, we will answer EEI questions and upload required documents. Note that as soon as I begin responding to the questions, the Submit to FEMA button changes to Disabled. We'll have to save our responses using the Save button before we can submit these answers to FEMA. As you respond, additional questions will be added. Some responses will add document requirements as well. You can view a list of the required documents by hovering over the Documents Required badges. Hovering over or clicking on these eye icons displays a callout with more information. After you've finished answering the questions, you'll need to save the responses before the required documents list is populated. You can expand and collapse the EEI questions to make it easier to view your responses. The list of required documents can be viewed by clicking on the Required Documents tab next to the EEI Questions tab. This displays a document tree where you can add documents and comments. The Help button opens a drop-down menu that includes a document management key and a link to view the resources area of the Support Center. The document management key provides a guide to understanding the icons and badges used in the document tree. Again, you can click on the eye icon for more information when it's available. To attach a document, click on Add Document. This is the link that says Add and has a page icon next to it. When you click to add a document, a dialog box will open, and you can drag and drop files from your desktop into this area, or click inside the box to navigate to your files the old-fashioned way. You can use the Edit button to change the file name, add a description, and in some cases, change or add the document category. You can also remove the document without uploading it using the Remove button. To finish uploading your document, click Attach Selected. The badges next to each requirement show the number of documents attached and the total required. These will turn green when the requirement is met. If the document you want to use has already been uploaded somewhere else in Grants Portal, it may be available for you to attach now without re-uploading it. Since the procurement policy was already uploaded at the applicant profile level and has previously been used to fill this document category on this event, we can attach it from this list. It may be necessary to remove the document category from the search to locate other documents that have already been uploaded. Comments can also be used to meet a document requirement or to add information to accompany the attached document. To add a comment, click the link that says Add and has a speech bubble icon next to it. You may wish to add a comment in lieu of a document, 
to identify what the document addresses, or to identify the location of a document that may be needed in response to multiple EEI questions. Document unavailable reason must be selected to replace a document and satisfy the requirement. General comments will not meet the document requirement on their own. Note that you can submit your EEI to FEMA even without completing all of your responses or attaching all of your documents. This may be necessary if you're requesting the PDMG to upload documentation on your behalf. Do not submit the EEI to FEMA if you are still working with the recipient to provide your responses. They will be able to make edits on your behalf while the EEI is pending applicant response. Once it's been submitted and is pending PDMG review, the PDMG will have to send the EEI back for you or your recipient to be able to make additional changes. After the completed EEIs have been submitted by the applicant and reviewed by the PDMG, the PDMG will advance them as projects to the CRC. The CRC reviews project application submissions, facilitates development of the application by reviewing and verifying all documentation provided, and validates or develops the scope of work and costs based on the codified damages. If the CRC determines they need additional documentation or clarification, they will issue a Request for Information, or RFI. The clearer and more comprehensive each EEI response is, the less likely an RFI will have to be issued. Accuracy and thoroughness in responding to EEIs can save significant time in the grant process. Some resources and reference materials are available on the FEMA.gov website, and in the Support Center and Grants Portal. Summary sheets can be found on the FEMA.gov site under the heading Public Assistance Project Worksheets. These are standardized forms that can be used to summarize information necessary to fulfill documentation requirements throughout the grant process. You are not required to use FEMA's forms, but whatever documentation you do provide must include all the information identified on the summary sheets. Many reference documents and resources are available in the Grants Portal Support Center. To get there, click the question mark in the upper right corner of the page when you are logged in. Within the resources area of the Support Center, you can find training materials and tutorials, fact sheets, manuals, worksheets, and more. The Applicant Process section includes the Applicant User Manual and many other useful guides. Reach out to your recipient point of contact and your FEMA PDMG for assistance whenever needed. Please be aware that if you are working with any documents used for a FEMA grant, you are responsible for safeguarding Personally Identifiable Information, or PII. PII refers to anything that can be used to directly or indirectly identify an individual. Some examples of sensitive PII are addresses, social security numbers, and financial account information. This type of information must not be uploaded into Grants Portal or Grants Manager. To report corruption, waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and or misconduct, contact the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General by phone at 1-800-323-8603 or via the website or mailing address listed on the screen. Procurement requirements are among the most complicated parts of the PA grant process, and non-compliance can result in deobligation of funds. Please make sure that you are following FEMA's procurement guidance for recipients and subrecipients. The Procurement Disaster Assistance Team, or PDAT, offers some training and tools on their website. Federal requirements for procurement and contracting are described in 2 CFR Part 200. For technical assistance with Grants Portal or Grants Manager, you can call the PA Grants Portal Grants Manager hotline at 866-337-8448. National hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. The hotline can also be reached by email at fema-recovery-pa-grants at fema.dhs.gov. We have many recorded webinars and tutorial videos available on our YouTube channel. You can find them by searching YouTube for FEMA Grants Portal or via the Support Center in Grants Portal or Grants Manager.